Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll talk about the next big thing in technology, AI agents. AI agents are going to transform digital transformation as we know it. From apps to integrations to automations, you name it, it's going to change everything. It's a paradigm shift. So let's talk about it. So we'll talk about four things in this video. We'll see what are AI agents, how they will change the technology landscape as we know it, what are the current challenges that we see, and fourth, we'll see why this is a big tens of trillions of dollars of opportunity. So what are AI agents? AI agents is the next evolution of AI powered by large language models or foundation models. You've probably seen ChatGPT or Copilot. So you're interacting with it and it can give you intelligent answers. For example, you're planning a travel, a business travel. You give it your business locations and your preferences and it can come back with an itinerary that is suitable for you. And probably you can chat with it and get a better itinerary for you. Now, what if the AI can not just plan your itinerary, but it can take your preferences, go ahead and book your flights, book your hotels, send you all the details in a package. So your travel is completely planned and booked by an assistant, an AI assistant in this case. And that's what an AI agent does for you. So how has AI become so smart past this large language models? So now AI has three capabilities. One is it has a planning capability. It can plan in your uh, travel, for example, it can break it down into steps, into tasks that it can carry out. Then it has access to tools. It can access an airline booking website or a hotel booking website and book the travel through API. So it has access to tools. And finally, it also has a memory. So a long-term memory and a short-term memory where it's actually remembering things for within these transactions and across transactions, which it's remembering what are your preferences, how it has done tasks in the past so that it can learn and do things better in the future. So the AI now has developed three new capabilities and these capabilities is what makes it, allows it to take action. And that's what AI agents enable past the large language models. And just like a travel assistant, the AI agent can take various roles. Just imagine it roles across the organization and AI agents augmenting each role. Whether it's an IT organization, it can augment a business analyst, a developer, a tester. In a financial organization, it can uh, augment in a CFO, it can uh, augment an accountant, and so on. So across the organization, AI agents can enable people to do better work enhanced by AI. So how are AI agents going to change the technology landscape? And this is where things get very exciting. With this advanced AI, we'll go past the traditional applications, the integrations and automations we were doing. You see earlier, what we were building were apps, and then we had this glue between the apps, which is the integrations. And then we also had in recent past the automations with RPA, BPM, which is also a sort of integration through your UI layer or through APIs. Now with all these technologies, we were actually programming the computer and telling it what it needs to do, whether it is an automation or integration, which apps it must integrate. So we had to program it to create the app. We had an if else logic within all these things in terms of what we want it to do. Now with an advanced AI that can reason and carry out transactions for you, you no more need to program the instructions. You just need to tell the, the AI the intent and then it can carry out the transactions for you. For example, let's take an automation. So earlier you were actually coding this whole logic into the automation through a workflow. Now all you're going to do is tell the, the AI the intentions. For example, you want to extend extract the data from this invoice and then the second step we want to put it into an SAP application. So what the AI can do is understand your intention, construct a workflow for you, construct agents within the workflow so that you are not hard coding things in terms of if then else, but actually have agents that dynamically acts based on the data that it's receiving. And then it can also carry out advanced data manipulations, whether it is creating reports or sending out emails or writing emails and sending them out. Basically the AI becomes super advanced, super intelligent, and so it can carry out 
actions on your behalf. So instead of building applications, building automations, building integrations, all you have now is AI and it plays the role in terms of understanding what's your intent and carrying out its actions, whether it is interacting with an app or you know automating various facets of the things that you were doing earlier. And there is one more big difference. Earlier, we were coding things and we were using programming languages to do these things. Now, all these AI agents can be programmed or told what to do through English or through natural language, through prompts. So basically, you are just giving each agent, like if it's the role of a developer, you're telling it you are a developer and these are your responsibilities and these are things to do. You are a tester, you're, this is your responsibilities and that's another prompt. So basically, you're moving from coding in different languages to actually prompting in English or any natural language. So what this means for the technology landscape is that A, there is, it's not about programming languages as such, and it's not about programming as well anymore. It's more about telling the computer the intentions and still it probably has to be done by technology people. And it can also be done by professionals or business uh, people uh, who are actually doing these tasks. So two big shifts in the technology landscape. There is no more explicit programming involved and there is no programming language as such because it's a natural language. So we should be able to do much more digital transformations and moving things towards digital in a big way now that these things can be done by a bigger group of people. It can be done by business people who can do a part of this one. It can be done by techies who are doing more advanced portions of it. And so the whole digital transformation and the way we do things uh, is going to shift in a big way. This is all great, but it comes with its own challenges. The first challenge obviously is having adequate control on this AI because this AI is autonomously taking decisions and doing the transactions. We want to ensure that it is acting within its the parameters that we have defined for it. The first most popular tool on for AI agents was uh, AutoGPT. It was one of the most popular project on GitHub at that time. It was super exciting, but one of the things it got wrong was that it gave AI a lot of control and then it was not so useful. So it's not useful and it can be also be dangerous. So we need to have adequate controls and safety measures so that the AI decisioning is within check. We also don't want people to become over-reliant on these AI agents as they become comfortable with it, they start blindly following what it is uh, telling us. So we want to ensure that there is enough audits and there is enough checks ensuring there is no biases and all ethics is taken care of when we are starting to use AI agents. And one final thing we need to remember is that all this AI agent frameworks could also be blown away by a new model or a foundational model uh, like GPT-5. The GPT-5 could incorporate these capabilities like tools, memory and planning, which already it has it to some extent, even with the GPT-4, uh, but GPT-5 may be so capable that probably we don't need even an AI agent framework. But what people have seen is that an AI agent framework enhances the outputs provided by the foundation models. For example, the outputs from GPT 3.5 was on par or better than GPT 4 with the agent framework. And with GPT 4 with the agent framework is much more useful. So maybe with GPT 5 and agent framework, it will be much more useful. And so AI agents would still be used. So those were the challenges. But if we can overcome these challenges, then we are looking at a tens of trillions of dollars of opportunity. And that's an estimate from Sequoia Capital. One of the big opportunities for AI is to replace services with software. And if that's the TAM that we're going after, the starting point is not hundreds of billions. The starting point is possibly tens of trillions. Because what AI can do is carry out transactions on our behalf. So just imagine a lot of the services that is being done can be augmented by AI agents. All the white collar jobs 
white collar roles out there can be augmented by AI. So we are going to see an explosion in productivity in all the service jobs. And this improvement in service jobs is what is leading to this estimate of tens of trillions of dollars. So there you have it. AI agents is an incredible and exciting opportunity. We are looking at a future where humans and AI work together to provide amazing experiences for people, whether they're customers, whether they're employees, whether they're vendors, whether they're people anywhere, these amazing experiences are going to change the way we work and live. We are going to keep exploring AI agents even further in future videos. So if that's of interest, please do subscribe. Thank you for watching today and I'll see you on the next one.